Hello to all YouTubers and welcome to another video by New York Stilo. Today, today we're going to talk about green hair algae problems and solutions. Guys, it is probably the most common question, the most popular question on my channel. Uh, you know, several messages a day, uh, no lie, of people who are having green hair algae problems. And, you know, they, they're like, well, I got this problem. How do I solve it? We're going to talk about that here today. Uh, despite the fact that I've released uh, several videos, uh, you know, dealing with other types of nuisance type algaes, I never really did one on green hair algae. And so we're going to talk about that today. Now, on my channel, guys, there's a few things I wanted to discuss before we talk about hair algae. Um, my playlist. We're going to start with the playlist. I've really gone ahead and tried to organize the channel, uh, you know, with all these educational videos and stuff, uh, different review videos. And so I've divided all of the videos in different categories. So you'll be able to watch, for example, um, 38 videos on, uh, you know, how to set up a 90 gallon system or uh you know there'll be uh, several videos on how to set up the nano system that i have you're gonna have some videos that are individually in a folder uh you know rated equipment reviews for example so definitely uh try to work a lot uh, you know uh, to try to get that information to you guys and make it easier for you guys to browse through my channel because this is a channel about education on reef aquariums and there are so many subjects guys on my channel uh, definitely do visit my older videos and don't hesitate to post questions however i will not answer a question again that i've already answered on the video and so so if you ask me that question i don't have a problem with that but what i'll do is just i'll refer you back to the video you know, and if you can't find the answer you seek there after you watch the video, definitely uh, hit me up and we'll try to figure it out. Now, uh, green hair algae, we're going to discuss that in detail here. Medication, you know, uh, how to prevent it. Uh, before we start quickly, we're going to take a closer look at the 90 gallon reef. It's actually day number 80 here. And everything is just looking absolutely great. The hammer coral has grown so much. Everything is just doing awesome. Uh, this um, Monty here, this red Monty, I might have to move it uh, in, in about six months when it grows even more. Uh, you know, everything is just doing great here. Um, many more videos to come, guys. This is all about education. And I want to make sure that I share that information for you guys. Now, there's a lot of subscribers on my channel. I've got over... Uh, I believe uh, 3,000 subscribers over that or something like that and it's getting a little difficult for me to answer the questions however uh, you know it, you guys I want to thank each and every one of you seriously because you guys are not only inspiring me you know and letting me know that I'm inspiring you to be in this hobby you know you guys just make it that much more fun uh, to share this information with you guys and I'm really enthusiastic about the hobby even more so now than I was before and I owe that to all of you guys so very important now green hair algae we're gonna take a closer look here uh, for those of you who have been following my videos uh, it, it, it is important for me to let you guys know that uh, you guys probably are already aware that I did have a slight hair algae problem in this tank and it was due to new tank, new tank syndrome so definitely go check out that video so you can know what I'm talking about when I refer to new tank syndrome but as you can see here there is absolutely no more green hair algae growing on this particular rock there is some brown algae growing on the overflow box but however this uh, brown algae is not diatoms it's actually a form of uh, brown algae that came in the rocks uh, down below here. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of that algae. And so uh, because that algae has been growing on the overflow box, it, you know, a lot of these snails have been reproducing in the system. And you can see uh, one of these snails here. They're called strombus snails. I'm not 100% sure, but I will put an annotation on this video talking about uh, the name for this particular snail because if you have these, absolutely will help greatly on green hair algae. Now, I have not done a water change 
uh, to the system and despite the fact that I have not done a water change and despite the fact that the system is 80 days old there are no hair algae growing and you know it just it just it slowly died out on its own now there's several different ways that you can go about uh, doing this in this particular tank it could have gone two ways I could have um, it could have gotten worse more hair algae all over the system or it could have um, I could have done what I've done here which is eliminate the nutrients and prevent the hair algae from growing now in order for you to battle this algae you have to understand where it comes from and we're gonna look at nature for that uh, you know when you visit the reefs like let's say you take a trip out to uh, Australia for example and you want to go out to the Great Barrier Reef and you want to um, uh, go swimming and whatnot. If you go diving, scuba diving in uh, Australia's Great Barrier Reef, you will notice that there is very little to no hair algae growing in this area. So you need to ask yourself, why is that? Why is it that near the reefs there's very little hair algae growing? Uh, but then when you let's say for example you own a, bo a boat or you're going out fishing or something like that and you rent a boat if you go out to the dock where this boat is parked and you throw and you jump into the water and you look at the rocks that are positioned uh, you know holding up that dock you probably will see a lot of hair algae in this area you know it is the sea but because this area is frequently visited by humans and polluted you're gonna see a lot of hair algae why is that definitely the nutrients these uh, hair algae itself uh, highly depends on nitrates and phosphates to really uh, thrive in a system they also do not like uh, high pH in, in a marine aquarium system and for that reason as I, I stated this in a previous video I always keep my pH above 8.1 you can see my pH here always high definitely very very important for the growth of nuisance algae definitely very important uh, for the growth of even uh, cyanobacteria and so you know when it comes to green hair algae you know you're gonna see that in the reefs it doesn't grow it doesn't grow because there's high pH areas there's not much nitrates there's not much of any phosphates uh, you know in the silicates and the such a lot of what these nutrients a lot of what this hair algae uh, you know really lives on and depends on in order for it to thrive so there's a couple of things that you need to follow here to really understand and prevent uh, green hair algae. Number one, if you're going to set up a, a marine aquarium system uh, similar to what I've done here, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have an RODI system. Very, very important, guys. Uh, I would probably say that 90% of you that come up to me and ask me, oh, I've got a green hair algae problem. How do I fix it? The first thing that I find out is that you don't use reverse osmosis water. Very important. I have three different videos on reverse osmosis in my system, so you might want to take a look at that. But that's step number one. Definitely, definitely make sure that you add pure water. The salt mix is going to contain, uh, contain the exact elements and everything, and it's not going to have phosphates, and it's going to make your system feel like it was in the sea. So. RODI water very important number two control your nutrients control your nitrates and your phosphates in this particular case here this 90 gallon system being 80 days old what I've done here is that I've studied the uh, aquarium hobby for you know about eight years and, and and there is a science behind how to set up a reef aquarium in this case here I've gone ahead and utilized a deep sand bed in the main display so that it can focus more on the removal of nitrates now below very important for uh, you know the growth of hair algae preventing that growth definitely you want to look into having a refugium and so in this refugium here I've got a deep sand bed as well so I've got two different uh, f natural filtration systems here that can handle the nitrates I do have a video also on deep sand beds a two-part video one of my best videos guys definitely go take a look at that but while the deep sand bed is taking care of 
the nitrates, I can easily let the catomorpha, the macroalgae growing in the refugium 24 hours a day, focus more on removing the phosphates. So the deep sambit is removing the nitrates and, um, and the macroalgae is focusing more on removing the phosphates. So despite the fact that I have not done uh, you know, a water change since I set up the system, I've ensured and made, I, I absolutely made sure that this system had some sort of a way to naturally remove nitrates from the system and phosphates. Now to further help out, you've got the use of a protein skimmer, very important to remove undissolved organic matter as well as uh, many other negative uh, decomposing matter, all of this stuff, which turns into food for the hair algae. So a protein skimmer rated for double your system size is going to absolutely help you out in this case here. Also, I also have a uh, false band reactor with some row of false media uh, hooked up here. Uh, always keep a bounty or some sort of paper towel in hand uh, to clean out the skimmer because this skimmer here is, is, is uh, you know, one of the things that about this hobby that are not that great is the fact that the better the skimmer is, the more you're going to have to clean it. I mean, just look at this beast here. I mean, I just cleaned it out yesterday. You can see the neck of the, of the skimmer is clean and everything is just going upwards and all these bubbles. I cleaned it last night like around 3 o'clock in the morning and you can definitely see it there uh, picking up. So, the use of a protein skimmer, a refugium, deep sand bed. See, I'm thinking ahead of time and I wanted to ensure that my system had a way to remove these nitrates and phosphates. If you don't use this type of filtration system, you're going to have to rely on water changes. Or let me tell you this, let's say for example, I would have set up a bare bottom system here without a deep sand bed. If I would have done that, I probably would have gone with some sort of a, a, a reactor with some bio pellets or something that is going to, not, to remove the nitrates from the system. Very, very important. If there are no signs of nitrates, no signs of ammonia, there should be uh, you know, no signs of hair algae. However, there's always an if, and, or but here. However, testing the system, this is very important because I commonly get asked, well, I just tested my system, I got all this hair algae, but you know, I'm testing back negative. Of course you're gonna be testing back negative on the phosphates, guys. The hair algae is living on the phosphates and it works pretty much the same as a refugium. I can't tell you that there are no nitrates in the system. I can tell you that it is undetectable, but the refugium is eating the nitrates faster than they can be detected in the tank. So the same thing applies here to hair algae, guys. If you don't have a refugium, uh, chances are the hair algae is going to try to take over so that your system can survive. Definitely starve out these nutrients since day number one and I absolutely guarantee you that you will, your system is gonna look like this. I mean, I, I rarely uh, clean the back or uh, the front of the glass. Definitely control the nutrients, guys. Put a lot, feed your fishes frequently, but very little. Five to six times a day if you want to, but give it a little pinch here and there. You know, it's not going to affect your system. And so there are also, other ways that you can control hair algae problems, the use of uh, tangs, a fox face, uh, definitely a different uh, cleanup crew critters. You know, we're gonna we're gonna make a detailed video on that. I do have the cleanup crew on the 30 gallon nano system, and within the next couple of days, I'm gonna make a video showing you that 30 gallon nano system. It's actually running. It's it only contains two rocks, some corals, and uh, the cleanup crew. And I have added some of the cleanup crew to this system. There are some Nasserva snails, uh, maybe in the sand bed, probably hiding out. If I were to feed the system, uh, they would definitely come out. And there's a couple of hermit crabs here, like maybe five of them. I didn't add too much. We're going to talk about the, the cleanup crew in detail on that future video, but definitely a cleanup crew will help. A sea hare. Uh, will definitely eat it. Th that's the great thing about green hair algae. It's a little easier to deal with than that of cyanobacteria 
both like to grow in the same environment but cyanobacteria is a little more difficult to remove because it does not have natural predators so if you can't add critters to the system to kill the cyano you know you're gonna struggle with it more but in this case with hair algae you can add a cleanup crew now if you have uh, any questions on the cleanup crew uh, definitely wait out for that future video guys it's coming out within the next couple of days so we've determined that RODI water is very important making sure you control your nutrients and the use of a cleanup crew in certain fishes can definitely remove a green hair algae problem however there's there's something here that is different for all of us not every system is the same and you may be experiencing uh, old tank syndrome if your system has been running for too long and neglected definitely visit that video so you know in a case like this it'll be a never-ending battle with uh, green hair algae so uh, other things that you want to look for is make sure that when you set up your system uh, you keep it away from the window absolutely your metal halides or any type of lighting LED or the such that you wish to have you know you want to make sure that that's the only light source in the tank if you put it next to a window and it's receiving natural sunlight chances are you're gonna get a lot of nuisance algae also wanted to cover that lighting is far too often blamed in situations like this I mean it is it is just it, it, people are like well maybe I should uh, lower the amount of hours that I'm giving the photo period or you know maybe just run the lights for six to eight hours a day guys if you go to nature and you visit the Great Barrier Reefs you can't take away the Sun but then a green hair algae doesn't grow in this area so you should ask yourself what is it that I'm doing wrong what is it that it, 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 it what is it that I'm doing here that this green hair algae is 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 growing you know what I mean you have the power to control what goes in and out of this system and if you do it properly and you set it up in this manner here and you take your time and you listen to advice and you research <laughs> you know all of these are gonna come into play where you're gonna have a beautiful successful reef aquarium such as you see here so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video anything that I've missed or, co or didn't cover uh, post the comments down below guys support my channel uh, rate my videos uh, subscribe and the such uh, so I can be even more enthusiastic about releasing these videos and um, uh, as always uh, New York Steel will always uh, put out a video here soon hope you guys have enjoyed the video New York Steel signing out peace